Hey YouTube, I got my buddy James here today and we're going to go over his Nico Bolas the Ravager deck. Um, it's a really high value deck and it's beaten me a lot of times. Um, it's probably one of his scariest decks I think. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff in it. So I'm going to have him go ahead and show you some stuff about it and what it does. So what does Nico Bolas do? So Nico Bolas, Bolas the Ravager, uh, when he enters each opponent um, discards a card. You can pay seven and flip him over into a Planeswalker. Only uses time, only uses when you cast a sorcery. Okay. Um, so if he does flip. Yeah, actually. He which I, I barely rarely flip him. I know, honestly, he just does a lot. Of, like, just the discard isn't mean <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. Um, so it turns into Nicholas Bolas, the Ar 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 Arison. Mm -hmm. um, you know, bump, do ability, draw two cards. That's so good for Negative two. Negative three. I mean, does 10 damage to our creature or Planeswalker, minus four. For the target creature or planeswalker from my graveyard on the battlefield and under my control. That's pretty good. Um, and then it's 12. Exile all but the bottom <laughs> card of target player's library. Okay, so I've never seen you use that before. I, I've, I've never got to the ultimate, ever. You think that could be pretty and, easy and, with and, that and, plus two so good? Well, you would think, but usually if, if I, when I have flipped him, a lot of people target him right. and get him out of there because they don't want that bottom. Yeah, no, yeah, I would too, so for sure. For I, sure. I, that's why I don't really flip him. But you got a lot deck, of flying defense for him, though, in this deck. I mean, you yeah. got plenty of defense for him. I got plenty of defense, but I got, you know, there's like you said, there's a lot of value in this deck overall. Just for the achievement, you should try and get it off one time. I, I've Just been trying. Just say, I've been screw trying. it. Just get it I've off. I've been trying. I've come close. I've come really close. I've been too away from it. So, what's, let's start with uh, start with one of your main strategies. So, the main strategy, you is, said... Is, is out value in combat, mainly. Okay, and then... Um, and then I got a secondary strategy of mill in here, which works a little better than the out-value combat side of yeah, the thing. Yeah, I've lost to this card a lot. So, <laughs> so Kingstone. First of all, we got Kingstone. Um, pay six, artifact. You pay five, target player puts the top X card to his or her library in his or her graveyard, where X is the number of cards in that player's graveyard. Okay, so one so, thing I will say about that, yeah, you mill a lot in this deck. Yes. But it's not a target mill. Yeah. It's a uh, born mill. Um, all my opponents mill. Gotcha. So with Kingstone, I'm running the next card up is Alter the Boar. Um, one drop. This is ideal in an opening hand mm -hmm. um, because you can start getting the mill process going. For Kingstone. Yep, first turn um, is so annoying. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent puts the top card of his or her library in his or her graveyard. So it definitely gets you started on yeah. that aspect. Um, it does kind of help out some people though. With like grave grave deck graveyard decks, this helps them get stuff in the graveyard. But I have stuff in here to help kind of answer that. Um, which we'll get to. Let me hold this up a little bit closer to the camera here. Oops. There you go. You can kind of see it there. It's high enough. They should be able to get it. Okay. So one thing I will say about um, with Mill 2 is people say it's one of like the most annoying strategies. Yes. Um, I didn't think it was that crazy until I started playing against it. I was like, <laughs> Mill doesn't seem that. It, it just takes you taking a couple of the best cards out, and it really can screw up people's plans when they realize, oh, that's not in my deck anymore. Yeah. Oh, I want to tutor for something, but I can't. You know? or, 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 they, or their graveyard... Um, you know, they might have stuff in the graveyard and it's either not in there yet to yeah. help them or move on. And then this card here is sort of body and mind, um, artifact equipment. Uh, Crip creature gets plus two, plus two, has protection from green and blue. Um, whenever a Crip creature does damage to a player, you create a 2 2 wolf token and, and that player 10. mills 10 off their library into their graveyard. This has been definitely a, a game changer mm -hmm. on this one. Um, one, I put it on a couple of creatures of flying that I have, depending on what the opponents have, and I can get through easy. Um, and then the, the, the wolf tokens come in really handy to help defend myself against the ground back, back, uh, swing. And it's shiny. And, and it's you shiny. Can, you and can blind a, your opponents a, with it. It's a, uh, cow dash masterpiece. Yeah. I got lucky. I got that out of the fact. They get so distracted by it that they just don't know what to do. <laughs> well, the problem is I put it under the creature so they can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> and then um, here is Unstrife, the Killer, Killer Kings. Kings yeah. So originally when I built this deck, it came around Nicholas Bolas, old school Nicholas Bolas. And so that's why I got this card in here because I went to try to make around him. And then I changed it to Nicholas Bolas, the Ravenger, as time's gone on. You got the old but, school Nico Bolas. Yeah. yeah. Which and now I got the foil version and took the old one out. But on um, this one, legendary artifact equipment, 
Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and has first strike. Whenever it deals damage, whenever a creature is dealt damage by a equipped creature this turn is put in the graveyard, you remove that card from the game, and if you do, create a 2-2 two, two black That's so good. zombie creature token into play. That's really good for four, but you have to have that restrictive mana cost. But that's well, really that good. Restrictive just to cast it. And I've never two, even seen that card two before. Two equipped, um, two equipped it, which this catches people off guard. Um, a lot of people forget about the first strike. Mm-hmm. And they forget about yeah, I, yeah. The, the, the the creature dying. So this definitely does help. That's so good. On a bigger creature. And you're able to take out somebody's good big creature. Because mm-hmm. then you get removed from the game. And you get a 2-2. Two, two. No, make no mistake. You've got really good cards in here. But you're not a big like EDH rec guy. Nope. You don't you don't look at other people's deck lists much and stuff. Nope, you nope, just this have is to... All, I, this is... I, I, take a, I take my commander... I look at the color combos, and I go through. I look at color synergy, mm-hmm. not card synergy. That makes sense. And, and you have then, a huge collection, so like, yeah, you have, have a, a lot collection. to look through. And so I don't have to buy a whole lot of cards because I, I have a good a good collection. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, like I said, this was originally on the original Nicholas Bolas deck build that I wanted to do. This this card was I've seen a lot of play with it in older deck builds of Commander. But because of the the mana yeah, cost it's, and, it's and, and how particular it is, a lot of people have left it alone. It's not too bad. It's only too black. But no, I will say, but yeah. It's, and the card price has dropped a lot because yeah. of that. Um, well, if I ever make, a, you know, if I'm making a Grixis deck, I'm using it. It's good. Yeah, it's it, really it's good. It's really good. I mean, you know, you give your character plus three, plus three, and first strike. That's good that on its own, right there. Kills a lot of stuff. Yeah. Really, really. You're just good banking ones. on your opponents. Not you're good. You're just banking on your opponents not remembering, honestly, which they won't. Which, well, and then and you'll see here. I got some other equipments and some other stuff that really yeah, draws attention. Yeah, let's see what you got here. So my and next uh, one let's here. Let's get the English version here, so just here. so we can. I guess I'll read is, this out because there's a lot here. So it says, equipped creature gets plus one plus zero. Oh. Uh, when a creature deals damage to a player, unattach it and then transform it. And then, okay, so you just hit somebody and it turns into uh, Weathengar Unbound. Flying, Intimidate, and Trample, 13-13. And whenever a player loses the game, put 13 plus one, plus one counters on him. <laughs> so you got a lot of equipment in here, yeah, too. So, so he's just, just value. So I got this out of a pre-release. This is a proxy that I put in this deck because I have this deck in a different... I have this card in a different deck. And then... I just got through a buddy of mine through trade, this one, which is the actual card, just in a different language. <laughs> I think it's Korean and or I, something. I, I think it looks cool. It is cool. And the picture is a little different. A little bit. It's just the way they positioned it. By looking at it, it's a little brighter in the back. Gotcha, yeah. But I, I do like it. But I run this in case anybody questions what it now, is. Have you gotten a chance to play with that? Have you hit somebody? Uh, not since I put this new one in. Okay. But you have since you had this one. I, I, I've had, I've had, I've hit somebody with, with it, with that, and with the other in the other deck. All right. So sort of the animus Sword is pretty cut is and dry. Next. People usually know what that one does. That's yep. uh, that's just a ramping it out. Ramp, a good ramp card. And, and buff. You ramp buff, and buff. creature, ramp it. Sure thing. Move on. Then here we go. We got Black Blade Reforged. Um, equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each land you control. Equip uh, legendary creature for three. For only three. And, and then seven. equipped of seven if it's non-legendary. So I have this in my Lands Matter deck, um, which is Dacon Blackblade. And it's so cool. A, You've got a deck on Blackblade, old commander with that inside. With that, it's so badass. With an old art. I got this art in a trade. And from me? I, I think I, I think yeah, it was from me. Yeah. yeah. And I just had to put it in. I had to put it in it's here. It's sweet. Just to throw people off. Because, and you get a lot of land in this deck. I well, mean, I, you have high-costing stuff. And I you get a lot of land. Stuff, I, I get my land really well. Mm-hmm. And this on Bolus, the Ravager, Beefcake. I've won games with. Mm, but a cream, uh, but a cream. I've also put this on uh, a creature called Nightscape Familiar, which... No, that's the knock. Yeah, that yeah, is this guy right here. Yeah, that guy right here. And Regenerate. I paid seven to put it on him, and I beat face... <laughs> With him, just either one ramp. one, and I've been able to regenerate him to keep him on the battlefield, gotcha. and that's the reason why I did it because I had that to get sense. through some big creatures on the other side and of the some board. board wipes. And then, so this is a new one from Modern Horizons. I love it, absolutely love it. And he runs a lot of planeswalkers in this deck, so this proliferate is fantastic. Uh, yeah, we can put it up here a little oh, bit closer. There you go, perfect, there you go. right there. And so, Sword of Truth and Justice, a crypt creature gets plus two, plus two, protection for white and blue. Whenever a crypt creature deals damage to a player, put a 1-1 counter on, on a creature you control. And then proliferate. Then proliferate. 
Um, I have some perforate, some other perforate cards in here. You also want to infect too. I have a little bit of infect in here. Yeah. Just for a surprise to throw people off. Um, usually the infects stuff doesn't stay around very long. Right. People just don't like Dude. it. I'm not sure why. I, I think it's awesome. I, I, mean, I think it's fun. Um, I, I don't always win with it. That's not what I, I built this deck for. I just put it in here because I know it irritates people. Yeah. And I try to draw them off of Nicholas Bolas Ravager. So one of the things so, I will say about playing with you is that I see a lot of cards I don't see a lot of other places. I think people get too hung up on like um, looking at deck lists online. I know that's for me personally. I'm trying to learn how to like just check out the cards, really read them, and see what goes good in things. And I've seen some things I've never seen go off in Commander because you're one of those guys that's like, check this out, I got this cool card. I put it in my deck, and I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and it ends up just being awesome. So. Well, and some, of that, some of this is just, some of the cards in here are just flavor to me. Mm -hmm. I enjoy them. I enjoy the art. I, and with the way the deck runs... I think it's just a good combo. Yeah, and how sad uh, is it when you open a pack and you get a really cool card you know will be good, and you're like, ah, no, I don't know how to put it in. You're like, well, try it out. See how it goes. You'd be surprised sometimes. Well, and then also with that, I've had, you know my collection. I have, I have a big collection. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of cards that I look at when I first got them, and I'm like, this card is garbage. Yeah. And I throw it off to the side, and now these years later, I come back across, and I'm like, That's good. why haven't I been using that? Yeah. You know, so I, I kick myself in the ass. I'm one of those people that can't, make up their mind when they first see cards at the top. And then here's some of my ramp package. Um, so Her Helic Banner, when it enters, you choose a color, creature of the chosen color, get a plus one, plus zero, and I tap it and add a mana of the chosen color to my mana pool. Um, I do, I, when I play this, I choose the color based on what's on the board. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, it's, it's just to um, kind of beef up my little guys that I have, the few little guys I have in here. It's incremental value. Um, nothing, try, it's not, I mean, it could be for the win if I put it on like blue or black or if I choose one of the colors of my commander, I could, could get the win because it could help me with with um, the uh, um, commander damage, which right. I have one when this deck with commander damage. So one thing I will say too, I've noticed, and we should speed it up because we're already at the 12 minute oh, mark, okay. but we got a lot to go through, but I do want to say with this, um, incremental value is one of the things I've noticed in this deck where this says it gives you a little boof, boof, like boost, boost your creatures yeah. and people say oh you gotta have two mana mana rocks well this is rainbow and it doesn't enter the t battlefield tapped and a normal anthem costs like two mana just for like yeah. an enchantment that does the same thing so by combining it it actually does give you that incremental value and this is good it, yeah. it's annoying when you have like your five five flyers turn into six fives and it just keeps going up and you equip yeah. them so. so here's an obelisk of the Grisks um, just another mana ramp yeah that's just obelisk uh, People know what the arcane signets are. Thought vessel. A lot of people complain about me using thought vessel, but <laughs> I like to have no maximum hand size in this deck. That's good. Um, and then I got elixir mortality, so I can bring my graveyard back and gain five life. That's one of those cards too that um, when it first came out and I first saw that, I was like, I loved this card, and I've never used it in a commander deck, but I should. I, I use it when I when it first came out, and I got this card. I put it in every deck I own. It's so good. Yeah. It's had, so badass. And I was like, why? I, I, when it first came not? out, it used it to be helps. so good. It the people would play it in like standard and modern, even like it was. Well, but even uh, it reminds me of Felon's King. Yeah, the, the artifact of one drop that you can just tap, tap it and shuffle it. it does the same thing. Um, Traveler's Amulet to help with mana fixing a little bit. Yep, Sometimes yep. I do get a little hung up on not having the right colors, but not very often with the mana ramp package I have here. Sure, sure. Gem of the Becoming. You pay three, sacrifice it, search for an island, a swamp. And a mountain. What? Reveal those cards and put them in your hand and then shuffle your library. I've never seen this card before. Yeah, yeah. And you, you know it's cool. Every time about it. I play it, you Well, you, yeah, you, no, I've until I've seen it from you, I'm saying I never seen anybody play this. And what's cool about it is it's got Nico Bolas on the art too. Yep. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. A, a lot of stuff is, has to do with Now Nico what Bolas. is that? I've never seen that before. Now this is Soul Ring. I'm reading those Soul Ring. <laughs> so let's go into what, what we got here. These are Planeswalkers. Cool here. Let's see what you're okay, here. So this is the Planeswalkers. So I got um, Nicholas Bolas, Dragon God. Of course, he gets all abilities of all Plague Walkers on the battlefield. Which are, you have some other ones and, besides Nicholas Bolas. Well, I do, but I, I do have all the Planeswalkers of Nicholas Bolas. Um, I, 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 it's part of the theme. Um, some of the cards are out of Nicholas Bolas series. Some of the lands have pictures of Nicholas Bolas. Arch Enemy, Bolas. something like that. Yeah, so it, it's a, it's a non Nicholas Bolas themed deck. So, um, then here's Nicholas Bolas Planeswalker. This is the one I, wait, no, that's... And then, yes, this is the one I remember when it first came out. Um, yeah. This was a big deal, and then they reprinted it in the Arch Enemy. Yeah. 
Um, and then, you know, destroy target That's non-permanent. So good. For non-permanent, a plus non-permanent, three, non-permanent. destroying permanents is a plus three. Yeah, and then gain control target creature. I love using this effect. It's so good. Especially if somebody has an Abyssin out. Or their because commander. Then it, then it just makes my deck yeah. that much more powerful. So with the mana cost is high, I, I guess it's important to have those mana fixing and ramp and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. And then here's another Nicholas Bolas, God Pharaoh. Another high casting Bolas. But it has target opponent, exiles a card from the top of his or her library till he or she hits... Exiles a non-land card until in the turn you may pa- cast that without paying its mana. Oh, that's so good! Uh, it works really well. I've hit, I've hit some people when they have a mana pocket of like ten mana in a row before, it, oh. before I hit a non-land. That's so, like the god. That's like the dream. Okay, so uh, have you ever gotten this one? Exile each non-land permanent your opponent's control. Have you ever used that one? I've actually been able to use that one on, on this one with my, that's sweet. my kids. My kids. Weren't paying attention. <laughs> I've actually got um, this one off two ultimate. Um, That's the seven damage. Seven discard damage. Discard seven. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that one. And then this seven. one, I, I've I've actually got this one off two um, once against my kids for eight. Well, in commander, I imagine it's a good to use, but you might have take out a player. But usually, people have a, a legendary yeah. just because of commander. Well, depending on how early I can get it out and what, or if well, you start exiling them, yeah, what if goes you, on on the you board, start destroying yeah. the permanents. And then here's another Nicholas Bolas the Deceiver. This one is a foil, and it came out. Um, I think it, I believe it was this one that came out in a starter deck. Sure. And I got it just for that. For that, because is he was, your favorite uh, favorite thing in in uh, in Magic? Is he your favorite like Bolas, guy? He's uh, it's dragons are dragons, dragons are okay. And but he just. He's, he's badass. I mean, look at him. He Destroy target just... creature and draw a card. You got each one of those three life and this player sacrifices not land permanent or discards a card. It's good stuff. So he's definitely got a theme. And then deal seven damage to each opponent and you draw seven cards. And now this one I have never been able to get off. Baba Booey, Baba Booey. The bottom one I've never been able to get off. Mm, but a cream. And then also That's I got pretty. Jace the Mind Scrape. Now, a lot sculptor. of people know what Jace the Mind Sculptor does because he's so infamous. And this, but it is th- pretty. Th- this I got out of a box topper. I, I went to LGS one time and they had... The box topper in the case. Sure. Pack never opened. They have one of those I, I, at Magamore right now, I, by I, the way. I, I bought one, and this was what was in it when I opened it. So I definitely got my money's worth out Dang. of it. So do you know um, the Ultimate Masters and Eternal Masters packs or whatever those ones? Yeah. They have a box topper still sealed in the case right now. I didn't pick it up though. It's too expensive. And then here's Ashkiak, just to keep my opponents from searching their libraries. Um. Just to mess with them. No, yeah, and that card sucks. Also, it's annoying. And you exile my goddamn also, Marin's graveyard. And then I can also my this one. Target player puts four cards in and exiles all opponents' graveyard. Nothing makes me fucking saltier than that bullshit. <laughs> I hate it. And then Jace Memory Adapt, which is also another mill effect. Yeah. Planeswalker. Um, and then also, if I can get the ultimate off, any number of target players can draw twenty cards. I never, I, I never let my opponents draw. I take all the draw. Sure, sure. Unless they're so milled that you're going to win from it. Well, yeah, that, but usually I've only, I, I've only got it that way once or twice. So uh, what would you tell the people that think that um, unless you're playing Bruvac, the really crazy competitive mill, that mill isn't good? What would you tell those people? I, I um, People think that. In my experience, I found mill to be very good in, in my yeah, aspect. I used to play mill in standard. Um, during a rotation, um, well, casual standard, because I don't play tournament, sit the, the new standard. I, I play older standard, um, and I've always loved Mill. Me too. Um, I, I think it's I, good. I, I love Blue and Black. I always thought it would be fun to play it, because it seems kind of like cheesy and fun, but yeah. it's actually really strong. But I, I love Blue and Black, so I, I like... I like that. So, so I want to show this real fast. I want to give a little shout out. So this is a autographed foil Nemesis of Reason by uh, Mark Tiden. And for people that don't know, Mark Tiden did the art for the original Soul Ring. He did Time Vault, Time Twister, Necropotence, Mana Crypt, Emrakul, Nev's Disc. He did a ton. There's more. There's more. He did like yeah. the best cards. Necropotence. You all love it. Soul Ring. And uh, you got a foil signed copy of well, that. Yeah, um, you so, have a huge collection that's my favorite card you own that's so, the coolest so it, shit it's kind of funny I had this whoops okay. I had this card in here already um, my my daughter got it for a buddy of mine and she was trying to build a, a mill deck and I told her like, hey can I swap you for your foil so I ended up treading her um, straight across and then mm-hmm. I gave her some other cards because I know yeah, for sure. It, it was signed. It was worth worth more. Isn't but, it interesting that uh, this... she, she's happy that I have it. She likes playing against it. 
and seeing it. So hold it up just really. That was good, but hold it up close, close, because okay. I want to show people. You can tell that this guy was going to do the uh, Eldrazi. This is before they ever came out, and you can just yep. see the art. That's like Eldrazi all the way. And so Nemesis Reason, if you don't know, whenever he attacks, defending player puts the top 10 of his library in his graveyard. 3-7. Nice. Nothing too bad there. Just it's badass. to mill. And then we got Knight's, Nightscape Familiar, which reduces your blue and red spells by one colorless Super less. underrated card. Super Great underrated. Card. Two drop. Nice. It's, it's good. It's good. And it's, especially honestly, here. if you're and playing here. Grixis deck, you gotta run this. It's like thirty cents to buy one. So. Well, I, I, I would say that's kind of like my one of my underrated MVPs in this deck. Absolutely, I, I underrate it, but it's so good. I built a Grixis deck, and somebody recommended this to me, and I was like, ah, you know, it's fifty cents. I was like, ah, whatever. I, I want to run all the fancy, expensive stuff, but this is really, really good. And then I got Gray Merchant of Ab. Yep. That, uh, which lets me gain life to my devotion is, to black, which is pretty simple. Oh, that's we right. All, we all know who he is, 2-4. Uh, this is the newer artwork. They call him Gary. Gary, yep. And then we go on the Jace Phasm, one drop, flyer, 1-1. One, one. And with the mill aspect in this, he can become a 5-5 five, five oh, real easy. quick. Real quick. Easy. You sing it. Yeah, and easy. I, I can play him, and like next turn, it, it's a 5-5. Five, five. Yes. And it just gives me a good blocker for cheap. 5-5 five, five flying blocker for one seems good. And seems then we got Bloodseeker. Um, whenever a creature enters opponent on the enters the battlefield under opponent's control, I may have that player lose one life. So I do use some life control to help control the board, just so people with life gain don't get out too far out of control. I've also seen. I usually that. spread the wealth though. Yeah, yeah. But if somebody has life gain, I know they're going to run away with it. I will target them because it's a may ability. I don't have to yeah. use anybody else. I was gonna say out. I've seen you when you played this deck before, where you decided to like. You are like, I want to spread the love. I want to, I want to Keening Stone you, which will kill you. Yep. And then I promise I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just go around the table. And you could have killed somebody, but you're like, no, I already said I'm going to go around the table, so I'm going to go around the table. Yep. And then Magnus of the Coffers. So it's just cool a little card. more mana ramp. Um, you know, for a two drop. value. Or a well, five drop, two to activate. Just value, four, four. When I first he's, a, saw, he's, he's a pretty decent blocker, He's good. Too. When I first saw that, I thought to myself, I was like, you're in a three-color deck. But then I remembered you actually do run a lot of stuff that lets you get basics. Yep. And um, it just ekes that value. Now, yes, if he was in a mono black deck, you might be He'd able to get better, eight mana. Better, but in this deck, you might end up getting four or five off of him, which yep. is still good. Cool. I mean, you need I, it for these planeswalkers. That, but also, you know, he's a 4-4 four, 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 yeah. blocker. And he, even though I have two other colors in here, mm -hmm. people think he's a big threat. So he yeah. does get targeted a lot, which is nice because then it pulls it off. Yeah, balls, you're like Bolas so, and stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. And then we got the Forever... Demir and Femur... Infiltrator. Infiltrator, thank you. Um, can't be blocked. Spirit 1-3. Perfect card just to get damage in. Also... Because you have a shit ton of equipment with, in this deck. With the artifact equipment, I can put on them. And I can make people mill and they can't block them. This comes back from my original mill. It does have transmute on it. So I can pay for yeah. it, discard it to draw a card. To oh, the library for if two? I wanted to. Um, now you can go get your ramp. You can go get your nice game familiar. Or I can go get... Yeah. yeah, creatures or whatever. Um, it's a good kind of a utility card. but So I didn't know about that, but I'm actually going to pick one up because it's uh, basically a tutor. It's a tutor <laughs> for three. Yep. And then here's Fins of Maint. So Infect, what is this? 1-1 one, one, and a lifelink. So it's just a little 1-1. One, one. But it, it's the infect that you want, right? Um, actually, it's, it's the life gang I want. Um, that It's just a 1-1, one, one, so it gives me a little bit of life. Right. Just to kind of keep me around. Um, also, it's a two-drop. So the drop, it, the casting, I can get it out early, mm -hmm. and it, it will keep a lot of people from attacking me because of the infect. Sure. Because they don't want their creature to get smaller, or their creature is small already, gotcha. which will kill it anyways. Yeah, that is sweet. Yeah, and you've got a little infect package in here, it, But too. it's just enough to kind of deteriorate people from messing with me. All right. Um, next, we got the Drake. Give you some value. Five somewhere. drop. Uh, when he enters, untap five lands, two, Free. three. Um, which lets me keep my turn going a little bit and build my board state. Flying. And um, also with that, will let me get two triggers on alter the board. Oh, because yeah. I cast him, drop it, untap five land, play another creature. card, or creature, Any or card. enchantment, whatever, to end the battlefield, and it gets another trigger. Awesome. So it definitely has come in handy a lot, a lot late, uh, lately. Um, Strict Geist, 1-1. One, one. For two, flying, whenever it does damage to a player, they put the top two cards of their library in their graveyard. Just another little mill guy, just to get little pokes in. Yep. Nothing major. 
Necromancer. So, so can I see this guy real fast? Dragon. So we got a Necromancer Dragon that says, whenever a dragon deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two. If you do, put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield, and each opponent puts the top two cards of his or her library into a graveyard. Have you used this against me? I I haven't got to use it. I he haven't, I haven't had the mana to do the, the pay ability. But, well, he looks good. 4-4 um, four, four flyer for five I, 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 I have used it and in zombies. games. It lets... You know, it helps you just it get mill everybody at the same time. Interesting. I know uh, I saw Bro had a cool mill deck. I wonder if he runs that. <laughs> and of course, Massacre Worm. This is one of the newest additions to this deck. Um, just because I've been playing with some people that um, like to run a bunch of two twos. Yep. So I put this in here just to be able to board wipe. Me. I do. I well, do. Not, I no, not just you. I know, but um, I do run you do, a lot but, of tokens but and my, stuff. My kids and. So That's really mean. With. So people don't remember that it says whenever a creature or opponent controls dies, the player loses two lives. So yep. I can lose ten lives sometimes with yep. this guy. I've actually made somebody lose eighteen in one turn. That's crazy. And then here's Charm Skulker. So whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on him. Then when he dies, put X one one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk into the battlefield where X is the number of counters on it. So whenever you draw a card, he gets bigger. Yep, he gets bigger. And then you have no maximum hand size. You draw your cards, and then you get a bunch of squids to fill up the board. Yep. All and right. then, so this card here for three it, mana that's pretty damn good it, it, it's interesting because this card I used to hate when it first came out uh, and then I played with a, a guy named Patrick Russell mm -hmm. yep yep and I watched him get this card back over and over out of his graveyard and watched him draw and put all of these squids and then I realized like, how, I want to do that I, I realized how amazing it was yeah. and, but even then if he gets bigger he, he will take creatures out um, if I can get him big enough He's, he'll be a big blocker. So would you say um, on a, on the Timmy scale versus Spike or the Johnny? Do you know what those are? Not really. I'm not in the. Whole so, okay. So Timmy is just somebody who likes playing really awesome big shit that's cool and like like just fun and splashy stuff. A Johnny is somebody who is like I want to do combos and find weird things that work that are gonna make weird combos. And then uh, Spike is somebody who's like I'm a tournament guy. I only play the best cards. I don't care. I only want to play the best. Where would you say you fall more on the line? All of them are cool. I, I'm a little bit of each, but uh, it, it, I mean I kind of play with what I like. What do you like mainly at heart. I, if I I got some like I have like this has the main strategies built in mm -hmm. but i play the cards i like um there's some other cards i could probably run that's better but here's a consuming apparition so sure at a time spiral that i got from you uh i already had this in here but he gave me the time spiral version with the old border and this card is great because it gets really big for each card in um your opponent's graveyard great artist too. and then whenever Alex i Polsky. uh cast a spell each opponent reveals the top card of his or her library until they reveal a land and put those cards in the graveyard. So this definitely helps with the mill. Yeah. If I, I like to get this out early to go with for all the sure. board. Um, unfortunately, I don't always get it. Um, either I don't search for it mm -hmm. on my own bad because I want to, I'm trying to do other things just to try the deck out on different ways of winning. Um, but this is definitely a good card for a mill. Oh yeah. Um, I have this in my standard mill deck. I have like three copies in there, four copies. So I use this card a lot in 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 my games of uh, the color combo black and blue. This and one's classic. Got Overseer the Dam. ETB line. destroy target creature, and whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, create a zombie token. Tapped. Oh, tapped. it comes in tapped. It comes in tapped. Oh, okay. But which is fine. It's because still I, an ETB kill though. It's a good. It's good. Uh, yeah. Well, but well, the ETB kill in this here, but whenever this is whenever after that, okay. so it doesn't matter. But it just enter yours. The zombie enters under my under my control tap. But I have other stuff to produce zombies, or tokens to help block. So, so this is just more value over the long. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, I was gonna say. So with the value train that you're running here, it's like you're getting a ton of mana with this thing. Yeah. The old classic way of playing commander, you're you're like you gotta get as much ramp as possible, a yep. lot of card draw, and just put out big beaters. Yeah. And that's cool because you're having some some things like you know you got what does this cost to play? Seven, eight, nine, nine to play. This costs seven to seven. play. But you're, I, every time I played with you in this deck, you always get like 9, 10 mana, yeah. and it's it's and good. It's game, usually. Um, Mold Drifter is a newer card that I put in here. Um, it's for some card draw? Chris card draw. I didn't like it at first because it, it was 5 for a 2-2. Two, two. You almost think you'd want to do a little balancing. It, I had to put it in here anyways just because, you know, the card draw. Well, think about this. 
This is going to enter the battlefield, draw a card. Yeah. This is going to enter the battlefield, draw two cards. This is going to enter the battlefield, destroy target creatures. It almost wouldn't be too bad to get a little bit of bouncing going on here. Just I, to I, bounce your I, creatures. I've thought about it, but I like the, like I like the cards. It. I like yeah. the cards here. So, Bellfire Stinks. This is a classic. Flying Death Touch for two drop, one, one, and it draws you a card. Can you believe this is like a $3 card now? It's I can so, believe it yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's good. I, and you know, I got like 50 of those. And then, speaking of expensive. And then, here we go. Dark Side of Sorceress, which is great because a lot of the times at the table, people have a bunch of artifacts and enchantments. Yeah, out. and if you're new, and you might I not get, know what it is, but this I is a classic. People, most people should know what this does. Yeah, so whenever yeah. he enters um, the battlefield, Create treasure tokens equal to the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponent's control. I always, always you know get generated. I'm seeing a always. theme here with these enter the battlefield triggers, man. <laughs> a, a bouncer, just a dead eye navigator, just one, just bounce, bounce, bounce. bounce. I, I wish I had one. I, I, I just can't see. I traded mine away. Sorry, I, I traded to David. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, Riddler Keeper. So this is more for when people attack me or my planeswalkers. It makes them mill. Um, it's a three drop, yep. one four. Plus the he's, art's he's badass. Definitely, yeah, the art is badass. But he's a one four, so he can take a lot of damage if I have to block with him yeah. and stay alive. Um, I've actually beefed him up in the past just to have a big blocker and to keep him triggering. So, so who's that underneath there? Here is Nicholas Bolas, um, the original Elder Dragon. Um, that was it, the, the commander of this deck, but um, non-foil. Um, a buddy of mine, I got his collection, and I he had a four, he had the vault dragon, so I put him in here, took the other one out. Sweet. And it's just it's sick. We all know what he does. He, when he enters the battle or flying, when he enters the battlefield, or actually, yeah, no, sorry, it's at the beginning upkeep. of your upkeep, sacrifice him unless you pay three, one blue, one black, or red. Uh, whenever he does damage to an opponent, that player discards his or her hand. Oh, God, it's so annoying. It's scary when it's on the field. But I have to ask, when he was your commander, do you think he's a stronger commander? Do, who do you, which one do you think is stronger? Because yeah. I remember when you had him as your commander and you hit me and I discarded my hand. It was when I first started playing Magic with you. Yeah. It was it pissed me off so much. Well, it, it depends. Um, but the downside is if somebody kills him, then it's going to take it harder to get him back out. Yeah. He's a glass cannon in a way like that. Yeah, and we'll see. And I don't have, if you notice, I don't have Swift Boot Boots in here. Yeah. Or Lightning Greaves to help protect him when he gets yep. out. Um, no, I think this is a good choice. Besides, I, this is I, I so good. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. But he's he is a good choice. Even if he does get killed, I can pretty much recast him easy this one's just a lot harder to cast Sweet. yeah you get stuff like uh yeah you got yourself like your nightscape familiar freaking dockside extortionist and other ramp spells yep. and stuff in there and you get this stuff out and op quick. opposite an agent there's a newer newer addition to this um just to be able to mess with my opponents when they search you pulled this from a pack yep oh, um, i'm jealous I, I think i pulled this from yeah i pulled it from pack um, Last but, time we played with Bro and he had one of those that pissed yeah. me off so much. So this is just to mess with my opponents to be able to shut down their search a little more. But I, I, I take stuff just to mess with them. You know what, though? I don't even... Um, our group, play group, plays with a lot of searches. Your daughter, her deck is yeah. all search all the time. I run a lot of tutors, so yeah. this is a really good card. In this play group in specifically. Play group. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I, I noticed in Magic in general, watching yeah. like online matches, a lot of people search mm -hmm. for stuff. Fetch so lands, it, everything. It, it, it's good, yeah. So here's Vampisius Nighthawk. My favorite um, card, one of them. I, I love this card since I've seen it. Sweet. Um, this is a Judge D I D C I edition that I got from a buddy of mine, so it's foil. It's different art, but it's a classic. Three, three, three to drop, play. Flying, death touch, lifelink, two, three. Yeah. Well, we can't go wrong. How is so much value for three mana? I know. I need to put this in more <laughs> of my decks and I'm running black. And then it's I got so Evil good. Twin in here just to be able to copy other people's stuff. And just destroy it if I want to, um, just to mess with them, just to try to. That's good. Keep, keep it under control so people don't don't get too far away. They can copy your own creatures too. Honestly, yeah, I, I mean you can't. Just, you don't want to kill your own, no, but you can, I can double up some good. Yeah, um, as long as it ain't legendary. Mm -hmm. um, and here's Bell Strike Spy. Um, this is just to help mill. Uh, what does that do? A little two three um, flying when he enters the battlefield. Target player reveals the top of his library. To he she reveals the land and then put those cards in the graveyard. Okay. So just another little mill boost um, with everything else that I got going on here for the mill. You got so much into the battlefield triggers in here, man. Do you have <laughs> thing, Do you bring stuff back from the graveyard too? I can't remember. Um, That's got into the battlefield too. But so, yes, I, I actually do have some uh, return. The okay, cool. Stuff. I We're think. almost done here, guys. We have um, we have just a couple more piles. What is this? These are my instances. Okay, okay, okay. 
So, yeah, sorry for taking so long. No, you're right. Go um, for it. Here's expropriate. This is definitely a way to round, round the game out. Win. Late game. Just if, win. If I get there. I, yeah, I've won. It says, it. so it's seven, a blue and a blue, and it says uh, you win. <laughs> yeah. right so, so, uh, starting with you, each player votes money, time or money. Um, for each time vote, you take an extra turn after this one. For each money vote, you choose a permanent owned by the voter and gain control of it. And uh, exile expropriate. But it's funny because it's you've fun. told your kids so many times to never take uh, time, to take money. Yeah. Every time they choose time yeah. and give you extra turns. Every time. Every and time. I'm sitting there telling them because I, I don't <laughs> want you to either. I'm like, guys, just let them take it. Don't take time. And they're like, mm, no, we want to keep our creatures. Like, oh my God. <laughs> so, yes. And I've never seen you cast this and lose a game, by the way. <laughs> um, now, here's Ponder. Um, it's just to manipulate the top of my deck and draw a card besides its foil. I got it, and so why not use it? Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're running blue, you should. It's not an expensive card, but I like the foil. and I'm It's, it's it. good. Um, here's this one's Final cool. Revelation. Um, X and two blue. Draw X cards. If X is ten or more, instead, shuffle your graveyard into your library. Draw X cards. Untap five lands. And I have no maximum hand size the rest of the game. Yeah, and then I exile this. So try. this has definitely helped uh, bring my graveyard back. To my library. I don't think game. I understood how good that was. So uh, I play in my Urza deck. I think it's called. Um, it's going to stop me, but it's X two and a blue, so X and three, and I draw X cards, and it doesn't have anything extra. It doesn't untap lands. So I didn't realize actually how good that is. I think it's called not frantic search. I can't remember. It's actually a really common or like brain geyser is yeah. another one people use. This is just a strictly better brain geyser. And this came out of War and Spark. Um, series, which was a bolus heavy heavy series. No, I don't know if that's an instant, but I don't think it matters can, when you have that good of a card. I might have to check out how much this costs or try to find somebody who trades <laughs> one. That's really good. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. That's sweet. And then here's Forever Young. I can put any number of target creatures from my graveyard on top of my library and draw a card. Sweet. So if people like to play a lot of board wipes, if they aren't exile my stuff, I can bring them back um, into my deck. Plus, I, need to. I forgot, sorry to go back to this, but also you got the art with Ugin and, and Bolas too, yep. <laughs> which is very, very on flavor. And then Demonic Tutor, of course, to, for the search. We classic. All know, classic. Um, Dreadborn. So this is kind of a target removal for creatures. I need that. That's so good. Um, but also it target removes Planeswalkers. And a lot of people overlook that part. Yeah. Um, I have a Terminate. And, I didn't even think to just it, use that instead of Terminate. And red and black. And red and black, this is a good way to go. Yeah. Um, but Terminate is also a good option, too. I, yeah, but that's I, just better. But I've had this, and I've had Terminate in here, and they both really work well for me. So I think maybe Terminate's an instant, but either way, that Planeswalker yes, is. is super nice. Yes. yes. And then here's Dark Intimidation, which is another bolus theme um, aspect. Um so let me see this real fast. In a way. So it's five mana, and it says, each opponent sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker, then discards a card. You return a creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand, and then draw a card. When you cast Boss Planeswalker spell, exile Dark Intimidation from your graveyard. That planeswalker enters the battlefield with additional loyalty counter on it. So it double it gives you some value for your planeswalkers, yeah. too. That's cool. And uh, I also like how you had that one, this right underneath yeah. it, too. That actually, that one's because the flavor in this deck is a lot of playing like Nico Bolas. Yeah, can I tilt this? Yep. See how shiny it is. This is a really cool card, Seb McKinnon artwork, beautiful. And this also has a thing, right? Does it have a thing for if you control a Nico Bolas? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, so d deliver until the in, until the evil, choose up four target cards from your graveyard if you control a Bolas Planeswalker. Yep. Return those cards to your hand. Otherwise, an opponent chooses two of them. Leave the two chosen in your graveyard and put the other rest in your hand. Okay. And you exile it. So, three mana, draw four is, is really yeah. good. Well, yeah, of course. But it's it's card advantage. for That's so good. And when I first saw this card, I didn't think it was that great. And then if you're running a Bolas deck, well, it's insane. It's I, good I, even well, without I, it, really. I, I played it against you, remember? I, I The non-foil version. It's I so good. It and you're yeah. like, dude, that's awesome. It's four, draw four yep. for four. And you get to choose. It's not draw. It's you get to choose, too. Because yep. you can choose the four best things. Yeah. Yep. That's insane. And, and, you know, and that's definitely been a, ge a game helper. So if you guys ever want to make a Nico Bolas tribal deck, keep take note because this stuff is really, really strong paired together. And then here's uh, in Gr Grook's Wake. It destroys all planes, all creatures. I don't control all planeswalkers. I don't control. So this is yeah. a one sort of board wipe. It's a nine drop. It's high. Um, so it's it, expropriate, but it's, it's expropriate, high. But this is something new to this deck. 
Um, so I haven't got to use it a whole lot yet. And this, but I'm looking you forward thought, to it. When you grabbed this, you thought you'd put in the other one, right? The Liliana yeah. is one that lets you bring back the creatures from the graveyards. Well, no, actually, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a different. Um, yeah, I thought it was a different card. Right. Um, but I'm gonna end up putting that card in here anyways. Gotcha. To yeah, because um, when you have mill and you're running that high of a mana ramp, like you can get away with. Yeah. Play. And it's so. Well, strong. besides bringing that stuff to, on my side of the battlefield. It's win. Yeah, it, it would win. And then Game here's over. another. To, uh, to potential manipulation, um, I just take an extra turn for Classic. five drop just to Classic. help sometimes, especially in late game if I'm behind. This is helps me get caught up with everybody else. It's sometimes. a good card. And it's a good card for a five drop. And this then, is more uh, value. Yep. And then instances, I only got two. Smash to spin the rings. Um, the short turn artifact, smash the spin ring, does three damage to the artifact controller. I run that in the um, modern deck. Just Fantastic. a nice little way to get rid of a problematic artifact. Or just to do damage directly with the controller. And inflict somebody. Yep. And then unlicensed disin disintegration. Um, destroy target creature. If you control artifact, it does three damage to that creature's controller. Um, it, it's just nice. It's kind of like the control. creature version of that. Yeah, it's a nice board control. Yeah. Um, and I usually have artifacts by my stack. Um, you saw. Mm -hmm. So I always could do three damage to the creature's controller. I stand back if I were you. <laughs> it's been it's been a fun little card in here. And then we got the enchantments. So this one's an enchant creature. Corrupt consciences. Um, a corrupt creature has impact. And then you call, you control a creature. So you can steal so somebody's can biggest, steal somebody baddest creatures. Yeah, that's and good. And then give it impact and swing back. I don't on. think people really, when they like roll over it, because it's only a buck, you know. I think yeah. when people roll over this, they don't realize that this is stealing a creature and giving it impact. Yep. And sometimes people have stuff that that's just really strong with. Like a 7-7 seven, seven flyer when nobody or else on the board is flying. Avacyn. Or Avacyn. And then yeah. all my stuff becomes indestructible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've that's... done that. that that's awesome. Oh, yeah, that's right. With bro? Yeah, no. Uh, with... Uh... Or against Kalia. Uh, I've done it against somebody else that I played with one time, but yeah. yes. Um, so, f Psychic Corrosion. Uh, whenever I draw a card, each opponent mills the top two. Sweet. Just with a little bit more of the mill package. Um, and then Helm of the Gush, Gush Lord, which is a new card in this deck. Um, oh, I've seen that. Creature. This is Shadow Moor, the double enchantment cycle. Yeah. Um, so, as long as Crypt Creature is blue, it gets plus one, plus one. And whenever this creature does damage to an opponent, Draw a card. As long as this creature is black, it gets plus one, plus one. And whenever it does damage to a player, or to an opponent, that player discards a card. Interesting. Just to uh, keep their hand, try to empty their hand, but fill my hand up uh, with some card draw. Now, this is a classic. People probably know what this one is. This is Propaganda, two and a blue. Each turn, each creature cannot attack you unless its controller pays an additional two for the creature. And uh, last time, you might have been this deck you played where you forgot this out when uh, David and someone was over here. Yeah. But we basically nobody attacked you the entire game just yeah. from that one card. And I think Bro had something similar too. It was a different card. Yeah, he had the white one. But oh, Ghost man. Prison. So none of us just we just we just kept fighting each other <laughs> over here while you guys went crazy. And then uh Rhystic Where did you get that? Some homeless you. guy? Some homeless guy. <laughs> uh from you we did some trade. Um Aristic study, of course, does help with card draw. Um, there's not a whole lot of card drawn here, so it does help. Whenever an opponent a plays bit. a spell, you may draw a card unless they pay one. And I didn't know this, but I just learned this today, that they, when they're casting it, you have to ask then. It's not like, so say I'm drawing or playing my spell, right? I'm going to cast, uh, I'm going to cast this guy, opposition agent. Yeah. I'm going to, I tap my three mana and then you say, are you going to pay an extra one? And if I say no, then he comes into play. But the reason that's important is because if I say no, you get to draw your card, and then say if you draw a counter spell, you can still counter spell it because you're drawing before I actually play it. So I did not know that. Um, I just thought you waited until after they played it, then drew a card. But apparently, it's it's a little bit different. Well, but I don't know if it matters that much unless well, you're playing counters. I always thought it uh it had to that it had to it, um, wait till after because if somebody countered it, then then they, the spell didn't go through. So I always played it after. Right. Right. But I mean, you, yeah. I, didn't I just that learned either. that from the Command Zone podcast you're talking yeah, I about. I didn't realize that either. I'm like, don't. Yeah, I know. Interesting. So uh, here's some of the, the lands. So I got dual land here, Sunken Hollow. I uh, see. When it enters the battlefield, tap, it lets you control two or more basics for blue or black. I need to get that card. Nice little. Uh, I need all these lands, I'm sure. I'm running a new nice Rixus deck. mana uh, fixing here a little bit. Are you excited um, that they're coming out with the fetch lands and Modern Horizons 2 again? Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping it brings them down a little bit in cost. Thank you. Uh, here is Rexy Um 
Um, when it enters the battlefield, it enters the battlefield tap, and when it enters the battlefield, you return a land to your hand, mm -hmm. and you tap for red and black, which it's definitely a it's, it's a little it's a bounce mana ramp mm -hmm. card. Um, and then here is Dragon Skull Summit. Um, it enters the battlefield tap unless you control a mountain or a swamp, and it taps for either. Classic. I could use that too. And then Drown Catacomb, same, same as. Same thing, but just blue just for black. Blue black. You, okay. you should control a swamp or island. And then here's Watery Grave. Shockland. Shockland. Um, Basically, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you pay two life. Yep. And this is ideal in, in, ideal in turn one. Um, so that you can or, just like well, get your, around well, it. In your opening hand. Okay. Yeah. Um, not And I've, I've paid two. Just like be able to cast Alter the Born turn yeah, one still. For sure. But it helps me start color fixing my mana. That's early. a good land. And then here's Command Tower. Just any color in any your color. Commander. Yeah. It helps, helps you out. Um, here is an Interplaying Beacon. Uh, whenever you cast a Planeswalker, you, you gain one life. Nice. You can tap for a colorless. Doesn't come into play tap? Uh, nope. And you pay one and add two mana, two different, two mana of different colors to only cast a Planeswalker spell. Um, this is kind of a, a that's a, sweet a, a bummer in this deck. Was it because I don't run? I only don't run a whole lot of planeswalkers. Um, you run more than most people. Well, though. I run enough. Yeah, but sometimes it, it, it depending on if I get them out You'll get or a if few I get life, this though. out. I don't always get this out, so yeah, it's a hit and miss. But I, I enjoy it just to gain a, a little bit of life. If that's I need sweet. It, if I get it out, I also like the beacon. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's sweet. It's calling the planeswalkers. Get over <laughs> here. And then Radiant Fountain, when you enters the battlefield, you gain two life, one colorless mana, okay. just a little bit of life gain. Keeping you into that late me. game, because yeah. you're running some high cost stuff, so you want that late game. Roach value. Passage, definitely uh, pay four, tap <laughs> target, uh, target creature becomes unblockable into land, and it's utility at the same time. I need to run And it helps these. get through sometimes to kill people. Um, Karn's Beacon, which is a, a land, and you tap for colorless. Ooh. I can pay four and I can perforate. So this will help me get my commander oh, or my, uh, my, my, my planeswalkers up. And also Probably if somebody afraid. has poison counters, helps me kill them off. That's great. I really need you to run that. I'm making, a, I think I told you I'm making Jessica and Rayhan. Yep. It's a plus one, plus one counters deck with with Infect too. So. And then here's Requiem Tower. Because you like having no um, maximum hand no size? No maximum hand size and it's uh, just a colorless mana. Uh, just, I, I definitely like having no maximum hand size. This comes out early. It helps me until late game. Sweet. Um, here is some fetch lands. Um, these are proxies. Those are the ones I made you? Um, yep. Sweet, I, sweet. I have some of these. I just don't yep. have enough to go look through my deck. So <laughs> I know. I, I'm I, the I, same way, buddy. I, I run them. Um, but, you know, this helps me mana fix, too. For sure. Um, here's Crypt of the Eternals, which for Grissus colors is really great. It enters Battlefield. Whoa, I've never seen this card. It enters Battlefield. You gain one life. You can tap for a colorless mana. Uh, you pay one and tap for your, the three colors you, it filters. you might need. It filters. So, um, was this in the Nico Bolas Arch Enemy thing? Uh, this was... Or was that in the I, I believe set? it was. Okay, that makes sense. I believe it was. But this is definitely caught a lot of people off guard. It's badass. Because they assume that it enters tapped, and it mm -hmm. don't. It doesn't, and no, it, yeah. you can get a little life gain off of it, too. Azotic Orchard is just great. Something I helping, recommend anybody who's running helping, more than two um, colors should run it. Helping Mana Fix Me. Yeah. As long as somebody doesn't pull out a, a mono white deck, you're good I to go. usually use this. Yeah. Or mono green. <laughs> Those are two That's true. Me. Or just green white. Yeah. Uh, I, I've had that happen a couple times. My daughter has a uh, green white cat deck. Yep. And it, it hurts. Um, like emergency zone. Or... Emergency zone. Uh, to color this. I oh, I run this I, in I Urza. Pay yeah. one, sacrifice it, and I may cast spells. Uh, this turn as though they have flash, which is really good. But look who's on the look yeah, who's horns. Yeah, I got yeah, Nicol Bolas back there. there. Uh, that's the horns right in here. Uh, I don't really use this bottom ability. I just use it for. A it's actually good when you like you wouldn't expect it, but I have used it, and sometimes I forget I have it. But if you can remember, it can actually be really tricksy. Like, yeah, yeah I, so. I, I I just it's, it's just, a good land, and then Bolas. of course it's got Nico Bolas yeah. on there. So what are you gonna do, huh? Gotta have it. And then here is Traumatic Expanse, um, yeah. foil. Out of Command of Legends, just an upgrade. Well, man, mana fixing. Yep. That's mana expensive. searching. Um, Helms of the Depths. Ooh, this card, I think, is underrated. It's so good. In blue. Um, it does enter Battlefield Tapped. But it doesn't matter. But you get to rearrange the top three of your library. Oh, so and then good. you can tap for one blue for land. Free. For free. It doesn't cost you any mana yep. to do that. It's good. And it's a good utility land. Um, it, just, it, just, it just helps. Hold on, though. There's no Nicol Bolas in the art. Nope. You're going to take it out now. I'm just kidding. Yeah, there's no Nicholas Bolas, but it does have that dark look. Yeah, it's true. And dark, creepy. The Grixis. Uh, the Grixis So look. it's in there. 
Uh, Evolving Wilds. Just another Same search. thing as the Terramorphic, yeah. And then here's your most favorite card. Oh, my God. So I, I don't know if they know this. I don't really talk about it in the videos <laughs> I have on my channel. I'm very salty. I get salty very, very easily. <laughs> or over this card. So Pachuca Bog. Graveyard Hate pisses me off. <laughs> it makes me pissed off. So Pachuca Bog in a battlefield tap. Uh, when it enters, exile all cards out of a target player's library. Tap for a black. Um, Should be th th There's a funny story behind this. We were playing about a month ago, two yeah. months ago. My, my buddy Arlos was here with us and he was had made himself hex proof so i couldn't target him so i had to target grant yep. and grant was has been so salty over it ever since. i hermit drew like most of my deck away <laughs> By the time so, I, and I, I i'd gotten all my basics and when he did it to me it made me so mad and then i was so salty and i was like that card should be banned and then i remember the next one of the next times i came over you gave me a bunch of salt water tap yep. because i was so salty and i still am i hate that card it should be banned and then cascade bluffs just a filtered land Mm -hmm. um, you know, you filter a red a or card. a blue into it, it to get foil. two. Um, so it's a little manner up, but it also you can tap for colorless. And yes, it's, it's, it's foil. Fancy. I got lucky on that one. Hell yeah. And then here is Dark Water Catacomb. Another filter. Um, another filter. You pay one colorless and get two. One blue, one black. Um, this is definitely something to help spend my, my colorless mana into to produce what I need. Look at that art. And, cool. you know, another dark, creepy art. I really and like then, this art too, actually. Yeah, I like that art. That's just a... That's sweet. I like it being foil. It's bright, not mm -hmm. so gloomy. And then I'm running four mountains. Four mountain? Um, five swamps and five islands. That's a total of 36 to, to, lands. To, to, to round this out, 36 lands. Um, and it actually plays really well for 36 lands. Um, I have other decks where I have to run 38. If I go anything less and I don't run, I'm surprised this one runs so well at 36. I got one last question for you. What's your favorite deck that you have? Um... I, that's uh, I don't have one favorite one. You know what? Um, this is up on the list. Would you say this is up on the list? I mean, all the decks that I play, I the time I spent building them, and what the cards I got in there are for reasons. Right. Um. So they're all they all have a special place, uh, on my favorites favorites list. Uh, all right. Um, also, um, how many decks do you have? Uh, I have. I actually don't know this. You told me a couple times, but I forgot. And you're making a new one too. So. Kind of new one I have. But you're 16. making two new ones. No. You're making board wipes and then uh, all well, math, right? The, the board wipes is, is already a deck I have. I'm okay, just you're just modifying. It. But uh, I'm up to 16 commander decks. 16 commander and decks. And two casual decks for 60 card, which those are both at like 80. Because I can't run 60 cards. It's so crazy because like I'll see... I'll see your like your land bases, and I'm like, how do you have so many dang lands? Like, I I have uh, maybe seven commander decks, and I my lands are spread so thin. I have like no more dual lands now. So yeah, well, I, I, you know, I I've been buying, I've been trading um, for a while. Um, so always pick up lands. If you see somebody got a trade finder with lands in it, get the lands. Well, especially the the the, the utility lands. Um, yeah. There's a lot of lands out there that are garbage that I don't run. Right. Um. I stay away from the lands that enter the battlefield where you got to pay one when they enter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just a waste. I know, I know. Uh, it's, it's a waste of, of mana on your end. There's other lands out there that will fill that void and and just keep you on par with everybody else. It's a beautiful card. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Tell us what you think about Nico Bolas. We'll have some more decks coming up here soon. We'll check out some of his other cool decks. He's got a lot of them, and a lot of his cards are spread thin. But I think it makes him a little bit more creative. So uh, I always enjoy playing with James. He's one of the ones I play with the most. So thanks again, guys. And also, if you guys have any uh, ideas of things you would run, I'm always open to, yeah. open to hear. Um, but I like this deck the way it is. I'm really getting it dialed in. Yeah, you've been dialing this for a long time, yeah. too. You're always trying new stuff, it seems like, yep. with it, too. But, all right, guys, thank you very much. I'm going to let you mess with that so I don't screw it up. <laughs> Take it easy, guys.